going on, bro? How's it going? Uh, it's going all right, man. This is a uh, lockout, man. You uh, you reached out to me, man. Yeah. All right, I appreciate. I watching. Go ahead. I I appreciate you doing that, man. I appreciate you doing that. Hey, I appreciate the call. Yeah, I've seen some of your videos and some of the stuff you're talking about, and um, you do pretty good interviews. And then uh, I was watching some of your, some of the other videos, and with some of the broker stuff going on and the owner operator stuff going on. I've been in the industry for oh god, I'm 44 now, and I had my CDL when I was 20. So, All right, whoa, 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 whoa. we going we going too fast. Hold on, let me. <laughs> <laughs> let me. All right. All right so uh, let me. Let me. Let, 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 <laughs> all right. So basically, how I do my interviews is how how we doing it right now. We just chopping it up, talking, having a conversation, and all like that, going back and forth, back and forth. Um, are you on the phone or on your headset? I'm on the phone. All right, right your landline. All right, cool, awesome. That's 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 even better. That's even better. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get this puppy started. Then let's let's get it started. All right. All right. What's up? It is me, it is I, Locked Out Men, and I'm back with another podcast interview for you guys. You know what? With all this craziness that's going on right now, I I, I, I just really need to talk to somebody that's, that's in the business so that I can understand, so that I can understand before I get in to that side of the business because once i become an owner operator or independent contractor i'm going to need to know these things so let me go ahead and bring myself on up in here yes sir yes sir whoops wrong button wrong button so with that said i would like to bring to the podcast Mr. Eric Lawson. What's going on, my G? Hey, how's it going? Uh, it's going good. It's going good, man. It's going good. So uh, you reached out to me. Uh, I really do appreciate you uh, reaching out to me. Uh, it says here that you are that you are a broker. That, uh, I am. Okay, okay. We're going to get into that a little bit. Uh, why don't you go ahead and... Um, let my listeners and my viewers know who you are. All right. I appreciate you having me on. Um, basically, I have been in the industry in almost every aspect. Uh, I started out in Buffalo, New York. Uh, when I was 20 years old, I got a CDLB. Um, 21, I got my Class A. I drove for Schneider and pumpkin trucks. Uh, came off the road, had a local job at U.S. Food Service, so I've driven for a union truck driving job. Uh, then I joined the Coast Guard. Uh, in the Coast Guard, I was a federal law enforcement officer where I boarded boats and did safety checks, stuff like that. Uh, left the Coast Guard, went back into driving truck. I drove for uh, CR England for, I don't know, 21 days. I leased on with them, and I said, that's, that's about enough of that. Damn, 21 and, days. Um, 21 days it took Jeez. me before I took a, looked at a couple paychecks and said, uh -huh, this ain't going to work. Um, bought my own truck. Uh, drove for FedEx Custom Critical, uh, drove for Landstar, became a Landstar agent, came off the road, became a Landstar agent, looked at the Landstar agency and said, okay, this ain't going to work either, mm. uh, and then opened up my own authority. So I had my own uh, broker authority. I've also had my own carrier authority. I own some trucks. Um, so I've seen pretty much every aspect of it. Not only have I, you know, bought the t-shirt but i ripped a couple t-shirts on the way let's put it that way <laughs> so over the years i've seen a ton of what's going on now what i do is i specialize in over-dimensional freight so i'm kind of a specialty broker so i'm the guy when something's trying somebody's trying to move something that's 20 foot tall or 20 foot wide or you know 100 foot long you call me because every other broker has screwed it up so I am a broker, but I'm not a 
broker's broker, if you want to put it that way. I'm an honest guy in a world of liars, I'm told. All right. So and let, I like it that way. So let's uh let's let's go back to let's go back to the beginning. Twenty years old, you decided yeah. to uh you decided to come into trucking. Did did you um did you did you decide to come into trucking while you was in the military, or did you? Did, did you? No, my dad was a truck driver, so um, I grew up around it with my with my father. So I always knew having a CDL was always going to guarantee you a job, because once you were able to get the CDL, you had a job. There was always that you know, truck driving job. So uh, when when I went to college, um, I took for criminal justice, and I was going to go into law enforcement and ended up getting my CDL to help pay for that and ended up making decent money, you know, in the Buffalo, New York area um, with it and just pushed the college away and kept driving truck. Okay. But okay. that's how I got into it. Okay. So how, 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 how long was your tenure in college before? Uh, I did about a year. About a year. And you was like, yep. pre, you was like, okay, uh, driving trucks like gonna look like it's gonna put money in my pocket and keep it there. So let's let's keep it moving with that, huh? Right, exactly. Let's do that. All right. So you um, so you from the Northeast? I am. I am. Yep. How how was it growing? I'm up? a New Yorker, so uh, how, how was there's it? nothing you can say to hurt my feelings. How, how was it growing? How was it growing up there? Uh, a lot of shoveling, a lot of shoveling <laughs> snow in Buffalo. Let's put it that way. Um, it wasn't bad, uh, but it was definitely a lot of shoveling snow. It was colder, um, but it, it it made me who I am now, basically, because it just it it was. I'm from the old school. Mm-hmm. You know, work hard to get what you need, you know, or get what you want for that matter. All right, so right. you uh, so you so you drove local. You drove Landstar. You yep. drove uh, FedEx and uh, several mm-hmm. others. Uh, FedEx, uh, Custom Critical. Yeah. Um, I, I, to my understanding, in order to drive FedEx Custom cr- Critical, you had to be a team driver with that. Is that true? Well, it's it's best to be a team, but you didn't have to be a team. And the reason is, is when FedEx Custom Critical, I drove the track. I came in with my tractor trailer. They'll only give you enough miles to be able to pick up and deliver same day. That's so that's solo team, driver, right? You can keep going. Okay. Right. If you're a team, you can keep going. But if you're not, they're only going to give you two, three, four hundred mile runs every day, because they would assume that you can only drive 550 miles in a day. So if a run was 650 miles, they would pass me it and give it to a team. Okay. Okay. So that's where I basically said, okay, my wife went with me, but we weren't team driving. Okay. Um, so it was just, it was something that that's one of the reasons I left there was because I wanted, you know, a little bit, unless it was a weekend run, they basically kept me to two, 300 mile runs. And you, to, you just and felt you wasn't, that. did they, did they pay you good or was, was the pay good? Some did, some paid decent, some paid uh, decent it, it, um, and some were, you know, not the greatest. Uh, but it was definitely more. It, it's it, for if you're younger, and you want to go, go, go. I could do it. But when you, if you were more, you know, it was a lot of roll up to the dock, load everything, drive 300 miles, unload everything, sit and wait until somebody else, uh, another run would come up. So I might sit two days before there was another short run for me to do. So it wasn't constant every day they had something for me. I could get one, okay, great, Monday's good, Tuesday's good, and then I'm sitting Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday they'll find me something over the weekend that I could deliver Monday. And that, that just wasn't, if you're going to throw me short runs, you better short, throw me one every day. Exactly. That's how I feel. I right. mean, if you're going to get, if you're going to get like, 300, 400 mile runs, you got you, you to gotta give me that every day. Other than that, I'm not making no money. So what, exactly. What was, and that's pretty much. What was the start and pay there? Because a lot of people, when a lot of people, when they get into the game, they they their goal is to get to a to to a a FedEx, a Walmart. Uh. I made a, I, well, back again. This was um, let's say uh, 15, twelve years ago. Yeah, I was a dollar forty one a mile, all miles, empty or loaded. Woo! Okay. So okay. it wasn't bad. No. But that's fine when you're rolling, bad when you're sitting. Exactly. <laughs> so I had no problem rolling. Um 
but I had a problem, you know, again, like I said, they would sit. So it'd be great when you're rolling, and that's why a team can roll. I'm not sure what they'd pay now but with the tractor-trailer division, but mm-hmm. a team could just keep moving, and that was great for them. Okay. Or you could do commission of the load. I chose the dollar forty one because, I, you know, and then they switched me over to commission for the load because I thought I was going to be moving more. And then I then I switched over to commission, and I can't remember what the commission was because I wasn't there very long. Because I thought, okay, well, since I'm sitting, maybe the commission will pay me a little better. Okay. And it still it didn't I didn't do well enough to make everything go through, um, you know, to make money and do everything. All right, so so so, uh, so you 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 moved from there. You rocked out with Landstar, yeah. and you you did. you actually upgraded. So, what was the experience with uh, Landstar driving, and the experience Landstar on the other side? I mean, okay, so driving for Landstar, um, it, you were kind of on your own to almost every aspect. As a Landstar driver, you pick your freight off their board. So it's almost like having your own authority without your authority. So you have a Landstar board, you log into the Landstar board, and loads pop up. And you can watch the board, and wherever your area you're in, you could grab a load, take that load, and then they would pay you, I didn't have a trade, I think it was 75% of the load and 100% of the fuel surcharge. Okay, okay. So any load, so my wife would sit, and it was great, because my wife would sit on the computer. Uh, I did choose your loads. And we had something that would... Right, she would sit in the passenger seat, and she we had an auto refresh um, on our internet, so it would refresh every ten seconds. Mm-hmm. And every ten, if a load pops up, bam, we were right on it. We could call right away. Okay. Um, and I did well with that one. And what I just did was I said, okay. I even created like spreadsheets and and stuff like that, which I still have. How I ran with Landstar was I for my thirty four hour restart is. I would take a load that I could get off Monday, deliver Tuesday. So I'd take Monday, load Monday, deliver Tuesday. Load Tuesday, deliver Wednesday. Load Wednesday, deliver Thursday. Grab a load Friday. I can run on the weekend and get and go with it. Okay. And that worked for me there. And basically, this was around 2007, 2006, before the recession. Okay. And then I created a spreadsheet that I said, okay, what's the load paying? Because with Landstar, you could load your fuel card, and then you had a pay card. So whatever you didn't put on your fuel card would stay. You could leave it going to your bank account. Okay. So my planning with driving was I created a spreadsheet that I said, okay, I'm at a full tank of fuel. I know I, can, I need to get six miles to the gallon or better. That's 100 miles to my deadhead. And I'm going to use simple numbers. And 400 miles loaded. That's a total of 500 miles. So I made a spreadsheet that would tell me exactly how much fuel to take based on six miles to the gallon. And if it was a heavy load, I could change it to five miles to the gallon. So as I ran with that, and this worked really well, this is one of my experiences, and like I said, I still have these spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. If I got to my – I would – to my delivery and I got seven miles to the gallon, that was extra money that I left on my fuel card. So I only loaded enough money onto my fuel card that I needed for fuel. That's it. So if I ended up, if the spreadsheet told me I needed, I'm just going to make up simple numbers, $100 for fuel, and I ended up getting eight miles to the gallon because I'm driving through Ohio with 20,000 pounds, and I, I ended up with only using seventy dollars of that hundred, I left that thirty dollars on my fuel card. So I always did better. I always try to get the best fuel mileage, because then after three months, when I needed an oil change, the money for my oil change was left over on my fuel card. Okay. I sent all the other money to my bank, and what that did was allow me to separate my fuel from my regular pay. Using that simple math, trucking's a math game. It really is a math game. Okay. Break it down and for me. And one of the things – what's that? I said break it down for me. All right. Simple thing. Let me ask you a question. Go ahead. If I'm – I can either give you – let's say you work 40 hours a week, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. I could either give you an extra dollar an hour, which is an extra $40, or okay. I could pay your – let's say your phone bill is $40. Okay. Or I can pay your phone bill. So either I can give you $40 or I can save you $40. Hmm. 
which do you make more on? Well, I'm I'm going to have to I'm I guess I'm going to have to go with the phone bill because if right. I, do you if know I don't why? To... Do you know why you want to save forty dollars rather than make forty dollars? Go ahead and tell me. Taxes. If I give you an extra dollar an hour, by the time taxes are done with you, you're going to only pay. You aren't going to make what thirty two dollars on that? Okay. Maybe twenty eight, depending on what state you live in. Okay. But if you save forty dollars on something, you get the whole forty dollars right now. Okay. Okay, I, I, I that feel make sense? that makes plenty of sense. And I'd rather okay. have my money now. So, yes, me, yes, exactly. You want the lump sum, sir. Lump sum, pay me out. That So that, that's, you want that now. So when it comes to owner-operator, saving money, fuel consumption, uh, hauling a little lighter load so you get a better fuel if you can, that adds up to money in your pocket. Okay. You don't. Some people don't see it. So I would look at loads and say, okay, this load's paying two dollars a mile, but it's forty-five thousand pounds. This one's paying a dollar ninety a mile, but it's twenty-five thousand pounds. Give me the twenty-five thousand so I can take seven miles to the gallon rather than four miles to the gallon, because that load is actually paying me more because I can save on fuel. I can save the money on fuel. So it's about looking outside the box sometimes with the numbers that you're actually making to to actually to see who's making sometimes making more. And that's why I hear it's it's a very I know everybody in the world hates brokers now too, but that's how I looked at it when I was driving truck. You know, how can I take a load that's going to save me a little bit, a little lighter load? You know, well this going I'm going to have to run through this state of you know where it's only 55 miles an hour. Compared to 75 miles an hour, I'm going to get better fuel mileage. You know, things like that. You know, okay, here's what I'm going to do. My insurance is kicking the crap out of me. Can I afford a $5,000 deductible rather than a $1,000 deductible? I sure can. I'll go out and get a credit card for $5,000, and I'll stick that, and I'll never use it. There's my deductible. Okay. Now, I call my insurance company. How do, How much can it save me? to have a $5,000 deductible rather than a $1,000 deductible. Well, it's going to knock your insurance down this much. Okay, perfect. That's saving me. So there's a lot of things to look at. To, to, and, and because your insurance agent, she needs to, or he, I have a, I have a female one, so they, they work for you. You don't work for them. They, and they think, they, work, they think you work for them, but they don't. They work for you. So if they're not willing to you're not willing to go to them and say, hey, what can I do to knock my insurance down? If she's not asking you questions like, well, how many miles do you run? Are you local? Do you run over 500 or under 500? Well, I'm, I'm probably under 500 radius from my house. That's a big deal. Let me give you an example. I had a driver that went, I, my insurance was like 1500 bucks a month. My driver had surgery done. He was going to be off like a month and a half, two months. I called my insurance and said, hey, can we lower my insurance down to 50 miles and raise my deductible to 5,000 or the highest you'll let me raise it to? Because the truck's going to be parked. And there's no need for me to pay $2,000 or $1,200 or fifteen for a truck that's parked. We did that. My insurance went from 1200 to 200 for those two months. Now, so if you're, st- if you're parking your truck, you want to call your insurance and say, hey, I'm going to be sitting here for a month, whatever reason. Can we lower my insurance down to this for a month or two or wherever you're going to be down? Mm-hmm. That's saving. Okay. Some will, some won't. You have to find out if your insurance actually quotes under five. Some insurances, they only quote unlimited miles, which is 500 or more from your domicile, which is your house. Mm-hmm. Some quote less. If they do, do that. That's saving money. It's playing the game. It's playing the system sometimes. Okay, okay. So what? And that's the and so go ahead. Oh, okay. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I I, I was about to I was about to say something and that's, else. Uh, that, I'm sorry. That's part of the of the math game of of thinking outside the box and saying, hey, I wonder, making the phone calls and saying, let's see if this um, if I can do this. If they'll let me do this, or how would this make it better, or you know, and stuff like that. It, and the more math you know. 
fuel mileage. Um, especially when it comes to me with overdimensional freight, I'll explain this a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Math is monstrous. But knowing your numbers is another one. I don't know how many drivers you say, well, how much do you need to make a month? As much as I can. No, 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 no. How much? All of it. Okay, we're, we're still not getting to the point here. If you had to give me a number, how, what's your bottom line? That's what drivers need to know. And every month I had that written down. So when I went, that was my goal number. I can't remember what it was, but I wouldn't have to take more runs to make that number. Usually it took me two and a half, three weeks sometimes. Sometimes two weeks if freight was good. First two weeks of the month, I've already made my month number. Everything else is bonus money. Great. Crappy times when we came into 2008 recession, Mm -hmm. it took me three and a half weeks to make my monthly number. That, so when you're making good money, you need to be banking money. Okay. And that's and see that's what that's where a lot of problems where 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 owner operators and lease uh, lease operators and independent contractors comes into play because when they when 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 the market is good and everything. You know, they making money. They they're not saving the money, and they they're not saving the money when the market goes bad. So when the market goes bad, that's when they start complaining because they're not making no money that they didn't save while the market was good, right? Right. Exactly. Exactly. And that's that's one of the most important things. Have three. Have no business. I'm sorry, not no business, but most businesses should have three months of paying their expenses in the bank. Because at any day, those expenses, profits could be turned off. When you're working for yourself, the faucet could be turned off at any time. Mm-hmm. And that's how you have to look at it. When you're looking for someone else, oh, it's endless. It's a money tree. They grow money trees out back. Mm-hmm. You don't. It's basically a faucet that can be turned off. So if it's turned off or slowed down, you've got to be able to look at that. And that's when, like I said, okay, it's been turned off for one month. Where do I start kicking down in my expenses? Again, can I call my insurance? Is that something we can work? Um, you know, is there local stuff? You know, what's going on? You know, like I said, that's where people need to start saying, okay, where am I at financially? But if you don't have the savings, that's a problem. Okay. So you 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 are on both sides of the fence, sort of say. So let's go back. Yeah. So let's go back a little bit. What, what was your aspirations of uh of uh owning a owning a truck, and then from there you say you got your own authority. So what what brought you to what what brought you from just owning your truck and lease on to somebody to having your own authority to having your own trucking company. Uh, based, once I, when we owned our own truck, the re- recession came and, and things got slow. So my, we were in and out of Landstar and stuff. And my, we were a lot of other agents. Like we, I worked well with agents. It, it's a, when you look at a broker or an agent for Landstar or direct customer, if you're taking freight from them, they're your customer. Exactly. That's it. If you haul a C.H. Robinson load, C.H. Robinson's your customer. Mm-hmm. If you treat them like a customer, you'll get phone calls back. Okay. So a lot of agents, I would go in and, and shoot a quick message. Hey, I'm here. Bam. You know, right to their email. Hey, I'm loaded. Bam. I take a picture of the load. Loaded. Good to go. Okay, thanks. So a lot of agents said, you know, and I was really good with customers. I'm, obviously, I'm a talker, just like you're probably really good with people. So we're talkers. We get in there. Customers like us. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In a good mood, you know, good attitude. That's, little, you know, that's, joke here and there. That's what you want to do. You you want to you you want to make sure you had that good customer relationship. Right. So Landstar basically, uh, we came in one day and they said, "Hey, are you interested in being agent?" Well, I said, "I'm a driver." I said, "Well, your wife can be the agent." Hmm. She said, okay, so she went to the agent class to become a Landstar agent to get our own customers. Um, now, I had some contacts, but we had no idea what the hell. I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. Right. Just go in there and wing, wing it. Wing it. Yeah, exactly. You know? you know, so we, and my wife, you know, good look in person. You go in there, you carry yourself right, and, and people say, yeah, we'll give you a shot, you know. 
So, okay, we go in, we do that, and we get a couple, uh, we get a one customer. And with Landstar, I don't know if I'm just going to be bluntly honest, Landstar has what's called a co-broker agreement um, with everyone that signs on with them. Mm -hmm. So technically, I as a Landstar agent can grab a load from C.H. Robinson and put it onto the Landstar board. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now a land. Now I'm not supposed to double. I'm not supposed to put that back out to a broker truck, or I wasn't. But you could put it to a Landstar board. So because that's the only way Landstar trucks can see freight is within the Landstar board. Mm -hmm. So if I go to C.H. Robinson, I'm just using them because it's simple, right. and say, hey, I see you have a load posted from Memphis, Tennessee to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Okay. And I go ahead and post, what's your rate? And let's say, well, their rate is, I'm going to use simple numbers, $1,000. Okay. I say, okay, can I post it out to my Landstar trucks only? C.H. Robinson will say, sure, go ahead and post it out. Okay. I post it out. Now, if a truck calls me, I then can book that load for that truck through C.H. Robinson. Okay, for $1,000. So with Landstar, right. Now, the Landstar agent, again, I'm not 100%, it's been quite a long time, so I can't be 100% positive on the rates. Mm -hmm. But I used to get 9 uh 7% of 98% of the line haul. So you take the load of 1,000 and 2% comes off the top, so that's $980. So then I would get 7% of the line haul. So I don't know what the fuel surcharge would be, but let's just say the fuel surcharge, I'm gonna make my life simple. Fuel surcharge is 200 bucks. I would get 7% of $780. Okay. That's that's how a Landstar agent gets paid. Okay. Now, but the nice part about that is you don't need to know anybody, but because I can go on Internet Truck Stop or I could go on C.H. Robinson, grab the load, throw it on the Landstar board. And if you have any Landstar drivers, that's why you see a lot of agents posting the same load because they're getting it all from the same C.H. Robinson C. person. Okay, okay. So from – Okay, but a Landstar driver wouldn't see any other freight – they wouldn't see that freight if the, the agents weren't doing that. Now, mind you guys, he's using Landstar as an example. Go ahead, continue. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So then, so basically she became the agent, and she was. that's what we did. We pulled loads off and threw them on there, and trucks took it. Um, and then I moved into, that was 2008, started to get slow, and basically... Um, I came off the road to help her with the agency uh, because trucking was dying. You know, that was a recession. It was getting real bad, and I had to come off the road at that time. Okay. Um, I lost my truck back then because now you was, now at, I couldn't. I mean, at that time, you was leasing with, with Landstar, am I correct? I was leasing with Landstar, and I owned the truck. So I got the truck through um, Freightliner. Um, it was a Freightliner deal. So in the end... Um, I owed, I can't remember what it was on the truck, maybe 15, but they let me settle for five. Okay. Because there was a lot of us losing trucks back in 2008. Wow. In the, in the recession, you know. Um, so that was my first, that's why I said, I've seen every aspect of this, so I know what it's like. Okay. <laughs> All up and down. So then what happens is uh, she becomes the agent, and I start, I knew about overdimensional freight um, before, and we start, I get hooked up with moving over-dimensional freight. Okay. Oversize, overweight, uh, and double drops and stuff like that. And I'm just the type of person that, uh, let's put it this way. I joined the military late. <laughs> so when you got 18-year-olds telling me at, you know, 26 what to do, it didn't always go so well. It never do. <laughs> so I got in a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it, never, it, it never do. It's like, it's like, it's like. It never does. It's, it's, and then, you know, when you got an eight-year-old telling you that. <laughs> I'm a mechanic also, and I'm fixing this boat, and they're like, oh, you got to clean it. Exactly. I'm like, it never do. Yet. You work in that. And they're like, oh, no, it's got to look nice. I'm like, you want to look nice? Let me show you look nice. If, the next thing you know, I'm throwing tools over the place. If you're working, that, if you're working, so, in, if you're working in the fast food industry, that's that's what you got to contend with. You you got to you, you gotta contend with, with younger jats telling older jats what to do, and it just don't feel good. Yeah. So 
I ended up to what we call mess cooking a lot, mm -hmm. which means I did a lot of dishes um, until I made Petty Officer. So basically, doing I'm the type that, hey, if you're going to stick me in the kitchen just to do dishes, I'm going to end up cooking. Let me show you what I, I'm just that type of person. Okay. You know, if I'm here stuck, if you're, I'm here stuck here, I'm not just going to do dishes. Let me show you how I make this. Let me show you how, you know, I, or let me, so when it came to overdimensional freight, I probably talked to drivers endlessly. I wanted to know everything about overdimensional freight. I talked to, I called states. I learned, I got to the point now where I quote my own freight. I can probably quote any overdimensional load in five minutes. Okay. Doesn't matter. It's all my, I mean, I don't, most brokers have no idea how to quote oversize. They have no idea. They'll put a load out there, and I'll explain this too. They'll put a load out there and let three drivers call saying they have a load. This is another tactic brokers do. Mm -hmm. They'll have a load. They don't know how to rate it. They post a load for tomorrow. So what happens is three drivers call in and say, oh, I'll take that load. And they say, well, how much can you do it for? Now, hold up before... Let's say hold, one guy says five, hold, one guy says six, and one guy says seven. All right, so hold up before you... Then, hold up before you continue, yeah. b before you continue, because what I want to ask, what I want to ask, since, you, you, since you're on a broker side of things... Yep. The situation that's going on right now with the truck drivers demonstrating and protesting mm -hmm. and everything, uh, I, I made a video about uh, maybe about a day or two ago Whose fault is it as far as the rates goes? Some driver says it's you guys' fault, the broker's fault. Other uh, Others may think it's the driver's fault. So being that you being that you you just mentioned that you you put the freight out there and now you got drive you you got drivers call, calling in saying how much they'll do it for. Correct. So I, I, Let me. Well, you want me to make this easy for you? Yes. All right. Simple thing. Tell people to stop. Hang on. Okay. I'll ignore that. Tell people to stop looking at this through the view of a poor person. I know it's rough. I know I'm blunt. Remember, I'm a New Yorker, so I'm blunt. And start looking at it through the view of a rich person. Mm. And what I mean by that, mm -hmm. what I mean by that is. I, let's, let me put you, for example, you're a customer and you make widgets, okay? You're a widget manufacturer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you need to move your widgets. You call me up, I'm a broker, and you say, how much to move, how much to move these widgets? I tell you $5,000, okay? Again, let's just use simple numbers. Isn't it kind of your job... <laughs> as the owner of the widget company to make sure that you're not getting robbed first? Mm-hmm. I mean, wouldn't you want to make sure that I'm not selling that for $2,000? Okay. If, if I'm a shipper, okay. if I'm making something, my job is to make money, which means I can't lose money. So I have to oh, I, it, trust but verify, Reagan said. Trust but verify. If a shipper is allowing that to happen to a driver, then a shipper is also getting ripped off, right? I mean, they're getting ripped off. If I'm selling it by charging you five thousand dollars, and I'm that person, that broker selling it for one thousand dollars or two thousand dollars, I'm losing three thousand dollars for what? Tell me why. If I'm a shipper, I'm going to call you and say, "How much did you? Okay, the truck came and picked up." Uh, how much did we move it for? With, with how much did you move it for? Because uh, I got no problem telling my customer because they know I'm worth the money. <laughs> because I'm the person with my with overdimensional, I could be sitting on the on the phone with states trying to get a fifteen six or sixteen foot piece through Kentucky tall. I'm sorry, sixteen foot tall, and I got to contact seventeen power companies to get clearance to run through this. Here's my time on the phone with Kentucky. So for me, that costs money, right? I got no problem. So when you first person to blame is a shipper that allows a broker to take advantage of them. Okay. That's how I look at it. Okay. That's first. 
because let's face it, they're taking advantage of them. The second is any – now, again, this is a broker that is price gouging. Okay. 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 This, so a, not, not, not all of them do this. I'll explain the other situation to you uh, right after this. So let's say that they're getting this, and the broker does that, and a truck takes it. The problem is if a truck can afford to take it for, let's say, a dollar a mile – because it's getting him right, he had a direct, remember, at one time, the broker board was for backhaul. Mm-hmm. You had a direct customer that, let's say, he paid you, again, let's use simple numbers, paid you $2 a mile to head out, and you needed to get back to that customer to haul their next load. Okay. So you took the broker board, and you jumped on the broker board, and you might have took that dollar a mile to get right back to your shipper because you wanted to make sure you were back for your shipper's needs. So that broker board of that cheap freight, I've had guys take $4 a mile into Massachusetts and take $0.98 cents out because it took them to Ohio, and they were able to find a better load out of Ohio. Okay, okay. That, so I just, we're back to that math game, and the math game is, okay, i got a load going to Massachusetts that's going to pay me $4 a mile. I'll take the load up into $4 a mile. There's no freight, in, let's say, in Massachusetts, and it's only paying a dollar a mile. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a LTL load, not a full load, an LTL load. Because if I got to haul a dollar a mile, LTL pays a dollar a mile. I'm going to haul half a truck out and save fuel, and I'm going to look for the shortest one I can to get me in a better area. Okay. So if I go up to Mass and I say, okay, here's one that's a dollar, that's ten thousand pounds or twenty thousand pounds. It's paying a dollar a mile, and it gets me to Cincinnati, or it gets me 500 miles, something that I would deadhead anyways. I'll take it. I'll t- because if I was going to deadhead out of there anyways, if I'm making a dollar or fifty or 75 cents, I'll take it. Okay. Because now I'm getting paid when I was going to deadhead out anyway. So what about so so what about these drivers that's that's uh that's that's all over Facebook? That's all over. That's mm-hmm. all over the internet. That's showing these uh, these rates that these brokers are offering. Um, the the head of the broker the head of the broker thing I, I forgot his name was Robert something. Um, he says in in a video that it's it's too little when you got too many drivers bidding on bidding on too little freight. That's why the that's why the rates are are low like sure. that it's supply and demand and what happens another thing that does happen is and i can give you a perfect example there are direct customers big companies i'm talking monstrous companies owns six seven hundred different manufacturing places in the u.s and on uh, other countries okay who have called me for freight and I've, I've, I think I'm going to start my YouTube channel, and I'm going to create a little game game show thing, and it's, it's going to be called, you know, quote the freight, <laughs> hire you or buy, you know, hire you or fire you. Okay, okay. And basically, customers, I call you up, and they, you know, they called me up, and they've said, okay, I've got a piece going from one side of Houston to the other side of Houston. Just use that as an example. So about 50 miles. It's 16, six wide, uh, eight foot tall. It's two pieces and it's 50,000 pounds. And a customer, to me, I have to look at that and say, okay, what's required as an oversized load? What's required to move it? Well, in Texas, you need two escorts over 16 foot wide. An escort costs $250 per car okay. for a mini for half a day. So that's, 50, that's 500, so there's 500, bucks. 500 bucks. Right. Okay. Now, for me, I don't, my minimum for an oversized load it is, you know, the, the, I'm sorry, not my minimum, but let's say 1200 bucks for an oversized without escorts. Because, mm-hmm. you, th- you know, let's be honest, if you, as a truck driver, you have a day rate. Now, a lot of cu- people will call me and say, oh, I'll do that for 2000 Negative. I have customers telling me, uh, no, you can either... Move this for a thousand, or don't move it at all. Mm. 
That's a direct customer. So you guys, so so the because customers is 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 making the rates, and you guys try you you yourself try to negotiate more, but you can't. You you're only stuck at what right. the customer says, what they going to give. Correct, because there are so many, and understand now, some local guy who has a day cab and and only drives a hundred miles a day, and his insurance is down to a minimum because he's not doing 500 miles from his house. Um, he can do that because here he is. He might say, well, I only need a $500 a day. That's my, that's my day rate for my truck, 500 bucks. Right. Okay. So something that an owner operator might, might say, oh, I'm going to be up around 15 or 2000. Some guy with a day cab whose insurance is $300 a, a month because like I said, he's, he has a minimum insurance. He can do that. He can get that five hundred dollars, grab that load, hire two escorts, pay them five hundred, order his sixty-five dollar permit, go run the load, pick up in the morning, deliver by noon, and go find another load. So again, uh, again, like I said, it's 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 it's, it's a double-edged sword. I mean, the dri- the is. drivers is pretty much cut rate. I mean, cut throating themselves. Right. Because like yeah. I always said, and there's that somebody that that's going to move that load for whatever. But you got all the other drivers, all the other owner operators saying, don't move it. So let me ask you this. If let's just say they don't move it. Do the price change? It can. If, if you can't find anyone to move, but there's other options for that. We live in a broker world. You go to Walmart, everything's made in China. Well, it was before this thing. Everything was made in China. So Walmart's buying it from China for a dollar and selling it to you for ten. That's a nice. Welcome to a broker world. Okay. It, it's everything's brokered. Now you go to something made in, uh, just like something made in the USA. Let's say, mm-hmm. you know, I lift, I work out, I lift weights. I've got a Rogue barbell. Mm-hmm. That Rogue barbell cost two hundred bucks, but it's, it was the top of the line, and that's. After lifting for a while, I said, "I finally, er- I'm, I finally have earned this barbell, in my opinion." Okay, I could get one made in China for seventy-five bucks, hundred bucks. So, it's somebody can make it for less. Somebody's going to buy it for less. Exactly. It's it, and it's just same thing. If I can run my truck, because I just made five dollars a mile going one way, and I need this load to get me back. I can run my truck for a dollar a mile. Mm. I can do it. That's that's where when you drivers look at the broker board and they get all upset at brokers. Hold on. It's not. The, I, oh, Hold on for a second. Hello. This is who? Who? Uh, what's up? Uh, we uh, want to see how your business is holding up through the COVID-19 shutdown. Um, and see if you're looking for any paycheck protection program loans. Oh, no, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you, though. Oh, of course. Well, I'm glad you're in here, and I wish you guys the best during this time. All right. All right. Sorry about that. I had to take that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, Finish. No so, basically, like I said, if somebody can... It's it's not they can't you can't get mad at the brokers when you're running the broker board. You need to use the brokers for technically what, you need to find your own customer, and then you need to then use the broker board to get you back to your customer. You know what? That's that's. I mean, that's how it was originally designed. That's the sentiment that I've been hearing uh, from from a few uh, from a few interviewees that I came across. They they said don't just use don't just use the spot market for you know just you know right. for for generalization use it just to get you back to point A so you can get back with your direct customer. Correct, and that's where now if you choose to use the broker board, you can find the brokers that will eventually give you more money. Because let me put you this way, and this is another thing too. If if I don't know, I'm different because I know the people who haul for me. Because I'm a control freak, mm-hmm. so I talk to my drivers. I make sure they're knowledgeable. But if I know you, I'm gonna try to get you more money. 
But if you're your first time hauling for me and you haven't, even as a broker, and you haven't proved yourself to me that you're going to tell me when you're there, show up on time, you ain't getting top dollar. I'm not giving it to you. You got to earn it. Earn more money. Move even, and that's how I treated some of my drivers. Because I've had drivers say, I, none of them can tell time. I'll be there an hour. Seven hours later, all right, I'm here. What? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Traffic. You know, why am I accidents. calling you? Why didn't you call me? <laughs> Accidents, you know I mean? now, construction. Right, I have had drivers. I whoa, you want to hear a good one? I have had drivers say that somebody cut them off. The load shifted, and fit, not didn't fall off the truck, but drove itself. It was sitting on saddles. It dro- fell off the saddles and drove itself into the into the truck, into the trailer. Wow. Calls me up and says, "Oh, somebody cut me off." Day later, I get a YouTube video of him hitting a bridge. <laughs> What? Yeah, you... So he told me that somebody cut him off when actually he hit a bridge. Uh, hello? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's just one of those things that even working with brokers, you get once you get someone you work well with, you say, hey, I'm here, I'm loaded, I'm leaving, I'll be there tomorrow morning at 8. Tomorrow morning at 8 or 7.30, I'm, hey, I'm sitting here, I'm ready for it, I'm loaded. I'm empty. You got anything else? Oh, okay. That, that person eventually says, hey, I'm starting to prove myself to you. Is there any way you can find me some of the better paying loads? That And that goes, that yes, you know what, that goes straight across uh, straight across trucking. You know, even as a company driver, you start to show and prove yourself. Of course, you're going to start getting the better loads. So you'll be, so, yeah. so how long you been, uh, how long you been in a broker gang? Um, about 10 10- 12 years, 12 years brokers, 10 years oversized. All right, so over, so oversized, what's, what's the going rate mm-hmm. for, for oversized load? Oh, God, it varies. It varies because with oversized, um, size matters. That's just like in life. It's the only thing that deals with, thank God, size matters, because if not, you know, I'm in trouble. But basically, um, every aspect of it is different because you then need to either use different equipment, which costs more. So it's very difficult to quote um, an oversized load unless you know the dimensions of the load itself. That way I can know what type of equipment I'm going to put it on and how long it's going to take to do it. So how so how often do drivers call you for, for oversized loads that uh, that that give list and I'm I'm playing devil's advocate here that that gives yeah. you one one dimension or one size just to get that load and then when they get that load you you find out that they can't move it uh never for me though but that's me being a control freak because the biggest thing with me is when they call me um with oversized you need to know your equipment you really need to know your equipment and everything about your equipment it's huge because it matters. So when they call me, if you're, I have a step deck load, I'll say, hey, are you a low pro step deck? Yeah. What tire, what's your tire size? Uh, twenty-two fives. I'm like, well, all right, you're not a low pro. Low pro is 17 fives. What's your deck height? Uh, 38. That's not a low pro. Low pro is 32 to 34, <laughs> maybe 35. So you don't even know that you're not a low pro, but you're telling me you're a low pro. Click. <laughs> I, I don't... <laughs> You know what I mean? So for me, I don't. If they're telling me that they've already, you know, so I've I, I've had a couple people tell me and says, "Oh, you, how much are you paying for that?" Let's make up a simple number. Uh, it's two hundred miles. I'm paying a you thousand know, bucks. It's you know ten foot wide in Texas. Oh, you need escorts? Really? Where do you need escorts? Uh, the the whole way? No, you don't. What's the dimensions that you need escorts at? Oh, uh, you need them anything over eight? No. You need them anything over fourteen, and it's only ten wide. Click. <laughs> so for me, it, it, it's because I'm your, either your best friend or your worst enemy like when it, as it, when you deal with me as a broker, because I have. I, do I pay well? Yes. <laughs> I have, and I have had customers where I've charged thirty thousand or paid you know twenty five thousand, thirty thousand dollars to to the truck to do a load, and another broker tried to come in at ten thousand dollars. So do you? And to me, uh, that's from. So do you, so, oh, you're breaking up a little bit. Hold on. 
Hold on. Let me make sure that's not my end. Uh, let me make sure that's not my end. Look at that. Yeah, okay. I see you was breaking up a little bit. Oh, you you got to check one, two for me? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Check one, oh, okay. two. Okay, okay. Yeah, I can hear you now. Um, okay, so... So... So the protests that just went on this past yep. weekend. Um, I... You know, and this is just my opinion, y'all. I'm I'm a comp now listen, I'm a company driver. So yeah. I, I don't know mm -hmm. the aspects of an owner operator. As I said before, I wanna get to that level. That's why I'm doing my I'm doing my uh research this way. So don't uh don't get mad at me, you know, because yeah, I, I don't I, I you know, I don't know. I don't know. I can only learn the information that I get. So this is what I'm about to say. Sure. So the protest that went on this past weekend uh, with the drivers uh -huh. going to the White House. Now, I thought to myself that uh, I don't think that was a good idea. I mean, you know, I the, the protests, yes, but I was thinking more of of them getting together and going to the Capitol and, and, and raise their issues with the Capitol than doing what they did this past weekend. Now, as, as, as they, as they reached out to the white house or, you know, to, to the white house and, you know, the president Trump, uh, uh -huh. you being a broker, all right, you, you, you uh -huh. looking at all of this, what do you say? What do you say to what do you say to them? That's uh, that's going to the president for help. Uh, to be honest, as, as blunt is let me show you how to run your business better before you do that. And the, I, I, and I have no problem taking the time to do that with people, honestly, because I once was a company driver. I once was an owner operator, and I thought the same thing. Now, are some brokers? Gate, grabbing money? Absolutely. And I've heard a lot of guys saying, well, we should have a minimum of $2 a mile for all loads. And let me break, explain something. Yeah, because Let's say we, that happens. Yeah, it, it, if you go and you create a $2 a mile for all loads, minimum wage, again, looking at this from the, from the, from the view of a rich person and not a poor person, is what I say, from a, from a, a shipper. If I was a shipper shipping widgets, and you just created a minimum wage of $2 an hour for all trucks, I'm buying trucks. Because there's, there's no way for me to lose. There is, it's a no-lose situation. I will haul my own freight because every time my truck leaves, it's going to get $2 a mile. And every time I grab something on the way back to my, I'm going to get $2 a mile. If, I'm, if there is no loss, if there's no way for me to take a business loss in trucking because I'm guaranteed $2 a mile, I as a shipper will invest in trucks and haul my own freight. That's what Amazon did. I don't need an owner-operator. And I will hire drivers and pay them 12 bucks an hour because I can tell you, my customers have some of their own trucks. That's what Amazon did. And they did that. Amazon... That's okay. what that's that's what Amazon yes. did. Amazon that's what Amazon, Amazon did. did you that. will see more you will see more Amazon mm -hmm. because when there's no the reason why customers don't is because it's hard sitting and trying to find the best load and it's and, it's, and you have to hire a dispatcher mm -hmm. and then you might take a load that you could take it as a loss and you don't want to lose money on the trucking. So if you make it where you can't lose money trucking who cares? Send them out and grab the first load that gets them back. It's, it's by law required to pay $2 a mile. Every shipper will start to buy trucks, mm. and they'll start to hire company drivers. Mm. Because a lot of owner the operators, a lot not owner-operators, but a lot of over-the-road drivers mm -hmm. do it to get the experience to become a company driver and become a local driver. Mm -hmm. So if I can say, hey, you're out one day, you're back the next. And then any other day you're not driving, you're working in the warehouse or you're you're doing, you know, you're working in the yard moving stuff. They will do it. You know what? 
Amazon. You know what? When you when and you he, talk about when you when you talk about that, I I I I really haven't I I really haven't seen that until you actually mentioned it, and I was like. That's exactly what Amazon did because Amazon, right. Amazon pretty much, it well they still doing it. They they cutting out the middleman. They they cutting out, they Correct. cutting out uh, FedEx, UPS. They already cut them out by having their own little fleet of Sprinter vans and having their own, you know, having their own delivery. You know, people doing that. Now they cutting out the air the the airlines. They got their own planes now, and now they got now that they, now they're 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 getting more and more tractor trailers now because they're they 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 cutting them out. And when you Correct. got and this is and where we, oh go ahead this is go, but, uh, but no no go ahead no and when you got when you got companies like Amazon, you got companies like well Walmart even though they have their own trucks. You got companies like them that's thinking more and more like Amazon, like, yo, why why do we need to contract with the with with the with the companies and the brokers? We got our own trucks. Perfect example. Perfect example. If I told you you were guaranteed two dollars a mile on every single load you moved, would you get, would you still be a company driver? No, I'll be no. No. Cause there's no risk. There's no risk. Nope. Right. So if I'm a shipper, I'm buying. So I, I got again. If you think to, through, if you look through the view of a rich person, not a poor person, I say, mm-hmm. buy. I'm buy, we're now buying trucks. Go out and get some trucks. Find some drivers. Put an ad out. Home every other night. You know, out one night, back the next, and then you work. In, and then you work. You know, only out three nights a week, or whatever. And then you rotate drivers with warehouse. Every single person in my warehouse that I would hire. I'd have them go get their CDLs. Mm. I would train them. I would train them with a truck. I'd hire one person for tr- nothing but training drivers in house. This is me looking through. Now again, a rich person. I'd be like, every hey, you want you want to earn your truck driving license? You come in on Saturday, and we'll train you. We'll have a driver here, and we'll start training you guys how to get your CDLs. And then you guys can go take your road test in our truck. You come back, and then you can work in the warehouse and be a driver, and you get an, I don't know, I'm just going to make some simple number. You can make an extra dollar an hour. I'd do it all day long if I owned a company like Any company that shipped, I would absolutely buy trucks. Mm. So would he- Even if I could cover half of the freight. And, it would st- and this is why owner-operators aren't thinking, like, what's going to happen if we do do that? It ends risk every it you have to have risk to get competition perfect example tell me something in life that's free that everyone has that's worth something i'm gonna say air because nothing in life is free (laughs) other than the air you breathe there's no if everyone has it if everyone has it it's free and everyone has it it's not worth anything okay College, college is when 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 you went to college and the government said we will back your loans. College prices skyrocket. You create a two dollar minimum wage, two dollars an hour minimum wage. Insurance is going to go up. Repairs are going to go up. Everything's going to go up because they they see that you're making more money guaranteed, so we can up the price a little bit. Mm. So you need to have competition. You need if you create that. Oh, we need more regulation on brokers. No, you don't. The only thing you would st- would stop a broker, I truly believe a broker should have a gift, is some type of license like a CDL driver, obviously a, a certification. I should have to take a test, mm-hmm. not online, but at a testing facility, just like I have my, I don't know, I have my safe serve certification mm-hmm. for, so I could cook. I had a food trailer. I had to go to take it to a person, take a class, and take a test and pass this test to get it, and it's good for four years. My opinion, just like a CDL, I, you, want to, you want the broker to have to have something that he can lose. If I could lose something, I'm more cautious about it. All you need to do to end some of the stupid with brokers is give them a license, just like a medical doctor. Hey, if you lose your license 
for malpractice, like a doctor, you're toast. If you lose your license for fraudulent services, you're finished. You you can't do it anymore. You're toast. It's we're pulling it. Okay. That threat. Me and working so hard to get that. That would slow down a ton. Because I see brokers in my side, and, and you can ask any of your drivers that pull over dimensional freight. Brokers, when it comes to over dimensional, are the dumbest people on the planet. Mm. Because I have brokers all the time. I have had phone conversations with my customer that they said, oh, this guy says he can do that load for $5,000 and you're charging me 20. Get him on the phone. Do a three way call. If, if, if you are happy with it, I will tell you if he can do it for 5000 but get him on the phone. Let me ask him some questions. Mm -hmm. If he don't know the answers to the questions that I'm about to ask him, don't hire him, because he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. So I'm not the I'm not a broker's friend, <laughs> you know, because there are times that they come into my industry and they undercut the hell out of me. Brokers and and pieces get seized and and, and scale houses, or they can't get it delivered, or the truck shows up and they won't they can't haul it. That's never happened with me because I look at drawings and schematics and the cus my customers, I'm like, you know, if I don't know what I'm hauling and what it looks like and the actual dims, I ain't hauling okay, it. Okay, that's what's up. Because I need, because I can't, it's, it's easy, if you've got a 15-foot bridge and the piece is 15 foot one inch on the truck, you ain't going to make it. Okay. <laughs> you cannot stick a square peg in a round hole. <laughs> exactly. So... <laughs> it's just, so, it's just, you know, and I tell my customers, it's easier to take up the whole road than lift a bridge. So when people start building, you know, tall stuff, it gets really, really expensive. Because when you drive down the street, when you drive home or you drive any place tonight, take a look at all those wires that go across your street. Okay. Some of those are only 15 foot in the air. Right. And some of them, I got pieces that are 20 foot tall. I got to take every one of those damn wires down. All right, I don't, but I have to hire a company to do okay. that. And then all those wires, they're all leased by a whole bunch of different companies. Okay. So even though that's one wire, it's leased by Verizon, and then 10 miles down the road, it's leased by AT&T, and it's, I got to call all of them. Okay, okay. So when it comes to, if you had, you know, low pro, do you know, what a, you know, if a, if a broker doesn't know what type of equipment something should go on, oh, a flatbed. That's not a flatbed. It's got to go on a step deck. You know, or it, it, that can't go in a van. Can it go on a curtain side? Like, my, if a driver calls me, I know all the answers. Then I, I don't have to say, well, hang on, let me call my customer and find out, or let me see, or they'll call me and they'll say, hey, can I load this? And I'll ask a couple questions. I'm like, yeah, that'll work. Okay, that's what's up. Or I'll be like, no, because, you know, or it won't work because, you know, you only have this much and I can't have anything overhang because it's not self supporting. So I have to have the deck underneath it and you're, so, you know, stuff like that. But I think the biggest thing is if you wanted one where you, it's difficult to have better rates right now when people, when we got a 35% unemployment there you go. when you have 35 percent unemployment we don't have much as much unemployment in trucking we see cheaper rates that's our unemployment is cheaper rates okay. that's our version of unemployment when employment's great prices are great so trucking doesn't really have unemployment it, i mean people do get laid off but a sign of unemployment in trucking mm -hmm. because trucks have to roll is cheaper rates. Oh, okay. And there's just, there's no other way to, you know, best way to understand it is with a 35% unemployment in the world, our rates reflect that. So let me ask you. Because when you're in an industry that can't. Let cut, me ask you this. Do you think, uh, do you think, uh, do, do you think with, with what went on this past weekend, and the uh, and the message that uh that the president sent out uh saying quote that I'm with truckers all the way he uh thanked them for meeting the representatives and he says it is all going to be all right would uh, <laughs> would he would, his theory, his theory of it's all going to be and I like Trump 
But his theory of it's all going to be all right is business is going to come back and truckers are going to be happy again. Because he underst- Trump is someone that is in real estate, but he's also handled – I can't remember if he made shirts. I can't remember what he did. But he, anyways, he did stuff. He had his shirts made in China. Yeah, he had all okay? his stuff made in China. <laughs> right, perfect. And the reason he had it made in China, it was cheaper. Exactly. Let's face it. Okay, he's always a business person. Mm-hmm. So Trump knows that in bad times, shit don't pay. Excuse my language. I'm sorry. Stuff don't pay. It doesn't pay. Oh, you're good. So he knows in bad times, I can't charge. For example, if I'm a widget maker, and right now my widgets are non-essential widgets. Mm-hmm. This is crazy stuff. And let's say normally... I ship out 10 loads a week, but nobody's taking my widgets because it's, they're not essential. So I'm only having about two loads a week of people that are taking them. Mm-hmm. I am, and so instead of, but, and this is the biggest thing also, when an industry, when my widget company starts to look at places where they can cut money, just like a trucker starts to look at places where he can save mm-hmm. money, in regards to insurance or better fuel mileage, businesses look at their business the same way. So when I start to see, can we make payroll this week? No. Uh Uh-oh. Where can we start to save money? Well, we can't shut the power off. Well, maybe we can go to a four-day work week. If we go to a four-day work week, four tens, on that fifth day, we can shut the power down at the plant. We're not using electricity. Okay, let's try that. Some of those other things, well, can we, you know, we have to lay off. But one of the first things they do before laying off is, well, we just paid $2,000 to ship this load. Can we ship it for less? Because if I can ship it for three, $400 less, I can, make, I can pay Jimmy and keep him on for another week. Right. So a lot of times when I'm, like, when I'm bidding project freight, the last place that people pull money from if they go over – I mean, sorry, the first place is the transportation end of it. It's unfortunate, but it's the only fluctuating, because you can't pay less, you know, if you're a union welder, I can't pay you less money. You know, if you, I can't pay the, if I use so much electricity, I can't just pay less electricity, because mm-hmm. they're going to charge me, you know, they're not going to say, well, we'll give you a deal this month. So I have to find places to be able to cut money from. And if transportation, if shipping is one of them, a lot of these customers are now coming to their brokers and saying, I don't have the $2,000 to ship this, but I need to ship it. Mm-hmm. What can you do it for? Mm. How, how much can you save me so I can stay open mm. another month? And, you know, that we can fend this off. And when things are booming again, and the first thing a broker's going to say, or anyone's going to say, for example, if it was you, if I came to you and said, hey, you're, I'm your direct customer right now, mm-hmm. okay? i got to close my doors if I don't. Is there any way you can do this for cheaper? You've been with me for years. Is there any way? I don't care. Can you pick it? Instead of picking it up tomorrow, can you pick it up Friday? Um, but is there any way you can do this for cheaper? Because i I got no choice. Because I don't have the two thousand dollars to ship it, I don't have it. Because nobody's buying my widgets right now. You're going to look at it and say, "Okay, let me see what I can do." And you might be able to put something together and say, "Well, if I do this, I can do this load. I can pick that load up, and I'll have a load coming back." Okay, yeah, I can do it for sixteen hundred, but that, I can't go any lower than that. Okay. And and that's just, and I'm doing that because I've been with you, and I was able to find a load right back to cover my difference in that money. So that's what customers are that's what customers are doing right now so too. So the customers so so it, 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 the, the the point of the matter is it's not it is it's not like you said earlier it's not just the brokers making the prices it's the shippers and the customers that's making the prices and then the brokers 
would try to figure out how much money they can make out of out of the amount that the shippers and re- I mean shippers is offering you, and then with that is what you offer the drivers. Yeah, or I have had times. I've not a lot, but there have been times with some of my customers that somebody is like, use this example. Hey, I've been paying two thousand. I only got. We've had some laws. We've had this. We're a slow time. I've only got eighteen to move this. I've paid the. I've paid the extra two hundred. I've taken a loss on that load to help a customer out because I've known that this customer is going to stay with me for one, and they did. And two, I, I I've made some. You know, I've made decent money on some other runs that I've had that in the bank to be able to cover that. So there are, and I have taken loads from brokers, trust me, after they have screwed things up big time, I have taken loads from brokers that they have paid me twice. I had took a load, I had a specialty trailer, and my trailer's design is called a perimeter frame. It's circular at the bottom. It's designed to haul round things. So I can carry it six inches from the ground, where most double drops are 18 inches. And they couldn't get it through a state that I could. And they took a load for, I can't remember the numbers. Let's use simple numbers. They took it from the customer. It wasn't my customer. I was just, it was somebody else. They took it for 10000 Well, they got it there, and a the guy loaded it, and it got, he couldn't get it into the state. He couldn't get a permit. The state would not give him a permit. It was too tall. My price to him, before I even knew what his price was, was $25,000. Okay. He paid me. They had to take out of. They didn't go back to the customer, because the customer said, "Hey, you quoted it. You took the load for this price. We're not giving you any more money. And if you don't deliver it, we're going to sue you." Okay. That's what the customer told him. And I told him, "No, trust me. This is what they should have paid. I'm gonna. This is what you're going to pay me, because this is. I have to have all these expenses. I need some bucket trucks. I need to do a survey. There's going to be police that are going to have to, you know, come with me. This is what it costs." That brokerage had to pay me that. Now, they took a loss, a $15,000 loss on that one Mm -hmm. load. So that broker, that TQI might have made 50% on one load, but I can guarantee you sometimes you make 50%, sometimes you lose 150%. And that's a part, that's doing business. So do I, I tell people all the time, oh, don't haul cheap freight. If you don't need it, don't haul it. But if you can just look at your numbers, and if it's something I do, like I said, I'm not turning down 75 cents or a dollar a mile freight if I just made $5 going in or $4 going in or $3 going in. Be smart about not taking it. Don't take it across country because there's no need for you to take a dollar from California to New York. That's stupid unless it's a partial but if it's something that you can take it for 300 miles or 400 miles or 500 miles and it gets you from Maine to Pennsylvania, <laughs> where you can definitely find a load out of Philadelphia, take okay. it because you're going to deadhead out of there anyways. So in that case, you're using that to your advantage to pay your fuel out. Because if you don't, I mean, you're gonna, it's going to cost you. Or somebody's gonna pay you. So, what do you say? So, so before we get up out of here, what what do you say to the uh, yeah. to the to the owner operators that are that that are protesting that feel that that you guys are gouging them, especially during this uh, during this pandemic? What do you what would you say to what would you say to them as far as uh, as far as far as anything? Great great thing about this country is it. Customers are not limited to brokers. If, if you don't like the way a broker works, you can either find another broker or you can find a customer and say, hey, I, I tell people all the time, if you, if you have somebody, get some business cards together. Say, hey, I live in this area. I know this area. I'm a road driver. I've got this much experience. Here's my business card. Can you just, where's your transportation office? He hands it to the transportation guy and say, look, I'm from this area. Um, this, you, know, you guys, I can be here anytime or whatever. And you walk in and you introduce yourself. You go to industry, you know, uh, meetings and different types of networking, and you find customers. 
You have to sell yourself. It's just like when I get a load, the reason my, my drivers, unless they do something stupid, which I've had some drivers do something stupid and say, here, I need more money. I'm like, no, you, you did that. I can't charge a customer for you doing that. That was your mistake. L- learn from it. But I've gone to bathrooms that haven't. And, it's my, and I look at my brokership as, tell me how much you need. I'll tell you how much I think it should pay, and here's why. Now, it's my job to sell my services to the customer. It's not my job to sell your services as a driver. You have to sell your services to me. I have to sell my services to the customer. And if my, cust- if my services are worth $100 or $1,000 or $10,000, that's my job to, to sell my services. So if, if an dra- owner-operator doesn't like brokers, find another broker, build a relationship with a broker, know him by name, send him a picture of your truck, send him a picture of the load that you're hauling, because brokers love that, because they have no idea what they're hauling sometimes. So seeing a load is like, oh, that's so nice. Find that relationship, or get yourself some business cards, get throw some clothes, clothes on, walk into a transportation office, and say, hey, I'm from this area, I grew up in this area, or, or however you want to do it. I know you don't need me right now, especially right now. Right now, you should be doing this. I know you don't need me right now because of everything that's going on, but you will. And when things start to pick up again, and we start booming again, your original people that you that were you hauling for you might not be around, I will. Take my card, take my number, I'll check in next week and see what's going on. Okay, that's what's up. And that's how you need to walk into, because once you have that customer, then you're only using the broker boards to bring you home or to bounce you someplace else if, if that customer has multiple locations. But either way, now is the time to be printing business mm-hmm. cards and showing up at the doors and saying, hey, you won't need me now. I understand that. I'm not asking for that. But when you do, and the other people aren't around because of everything that's going on, call me. And even if they are, give me a shot. You know, here's me, and you know me by name. Here's what I look like. And that's a huge deal. And even if you're sending the wife in, if there's someone like my wife, hey, this is what we do, you will. And, And so that's, it's, I know they want to, but the last thing you want is more, is more, we, but to me, the only thing that we need is, like I said, is, a, is for a broker is to have like a C, I got a CDL. I went and got my CDL license. I know what it takes to get it. Brokers should have some type of class that they have to pass every four years to prove that they know their crap. And that way there's something to lose. And this is where, like I said, and it's a big deal that, you don't want government involvement in things. Right. Cause they, uh, I'm not sure if anybody has noticed this, but government seems to screw things up <laughs> <laughs> in, in a lot of aspects. I'm not hearing you know, good things about the post office or our Social Security or a lot of things that they got involved in. They're not the best for the job, <laughs> it seems to I be. hear you. So do you want, I mean, I'm reading articles sometimes that these guys are wasting money on strip clubs and all this other stuff, and they're doing this, and we're wasting money on all kinds of, you know, military men kissing or whatever the heck. I read some article that they were doing a study on all kinds of stupid stuff. You gave money to study the sexual habits of bees? (laughs) What? Well, <laughs> on that, on, <laughs> the people you want to regulate us? Well, on that note, <laughs> on that note, I, you know I, I got so you. We need to look, and, and so it's something that what we honestly would be, like I said, I, I got, I carry a gun, I carry a handgun, I got, I carry it concealed. I had to take a concealed carry. Well, I didn't have to because I'm ex law enforcement, but you have to have a concealed carry permit to carry right. a gun. Yeah, brokers should have some type of permit, you know, or not permit, but a certification. So all anybody that's out there that says, "Oh, we blame the brokers. We need to get this minimum." Be careful what you ask for, because I'll tell you what: 
You want to see how many people and how many start buying trucks when you guarantee a rate and you guarantee a minimum wage? Shippers aren't going to use trucks. They aren't going to use owner operators anymore. They're going to buy their own trucks. Well, I would. <laughs> you want to, you know, you want to regulate brokers and, and make it where they're. Why? Well. Because I'll tell you what, when things are booming and everybody and, and brokers can't find trucks, and they have to, because I know I've done it to do it. You have to pay three dollars a mile to go from Texas to Colorado, or four dollars a mile to take a legal load to Colorado. Nobody complains about brokers. Mm -hmm. So if if that's the case, then it's not the brokers. Something if, if if something fixes itself, it's not the brokers per se. Now are they gouging? Sure. But on the same thing, do I get truck drivers that take my loads and never haul my freight? They try. It's huge when it's you know, a driver says, Oh yeah, I'm a trucking company. And the truck that shows up isn't even the same DOT number that I gave the load to. <laughs> that happens on the trucking side, too. So if it's, if it's fixed, if money can fix the problem, it's not a problem. And on that note right there, whew, it's great conversation, man. Eric, uh, I, I, I do appreciate you reaching out to me and uh, talking to me and, you know, getting me, uh, getting me a little bit you know, giving me a little bit of insight on, uh, on, on the broker side of things. Uh, Eric Lawson, he is the, he's a brokerage firm, uh, oversized freight and specialist. You could get a hold of them at 731-438-4888. Or you can email him at Eric Lawson at J what's that? J J legged. No, let's do office. It'd be, it'd be, let's do office. O F F I C E at J E L Juliet Echo Lima Agency A G E N C Y dot com. Okay, okay. He's. Uh, I'll tell you what. Next, you, you set your you set yourself up a call. You find some overdimensional freight. Put it out there that you're looking for some overdimensional mm -hmm. drivers. And you call me up, and we'll do a call-in show. Okay. And we'll play the 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 we'll play the uh, price it okay. game. And I'll give some. I'll give the guys some some loads that I've done, and then wherever they are, I'll tell them if they're either fired or hired. But I'll break down why. I'll explain what, why they were either too high or even too low. Because I'll tell you what, there's a lot of overdimensional guys out there that don't, you know, they're not really sure how to quote their own freight. And a broker gives them a number, and they say, "Oh yeah, that sounds great," and they get themselves in All trouble. Right. Because that number that that broker gave them. Get some, you know, they they find out they needed a lot more money than it paid. Well, Eric, man. So if that's something you're interested in doing. I'll do all that right, with we'll you. we'll put it. Well, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, put that together in uh in probably the next uh, couple of episodes, man. Well, Eric Lawson, thank you yeah. for joining me, man. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for coming on and uh, chopping it up with me, man. Maybe I got a little bit better understanding on what's going on on uh. On uh on the broker side of things, and this uh this particular guy right here, Eric, man, it sounds as you guys listen to him, he's an honest uh, honest broker. He he'll 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 let you know the facts of 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 yeah, if he I got, got if he got money that. for you or not. If you guys want to come on and join me, you know, chop it up with me. All you got to do is reach out, lockoutmeinpodcast at gmail .com. You can text me at two one six six zero zero. 2090 or head over to Instagram and hit me up there. Um, Eric, man, I appreciate you coming on, uh, chopping it up. Uh, if it, it, how, how, how else, where else, uh, people can find you at? Uh, that's pretty much it. The best thing I do, I don't, uh, I'm not a, I don't do Facebook or anything like that. Um, so like I said, you can pull me up at my phone number or my MC is seven, 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 zero, six, zero. Um, they, they call me direct. I'm a talker. All right, all right. So I have no problem. All right. Well, but let me know. And if any time you want to get me back on or whatever, let me know. And, and we'll if you have some questions that your crew want to ask me, we can do we, that. We got we got it right there, y'all. Y'all heard it from the horse's mouth. If you want to get a hold of them direct, 731-438-4888. Just make sure you know just just make sure you know what you got before you call this man because he's gonna let you know the real. And on this note, 
I appreciate everybody watching. If you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this and that all button. I am your humble host, Lockout Men. This is Mr. Eric Lawson. What's what's the name of the what's what's the name of the company? Uh, it's JEL Agency. JEL Agency. Special, specialized freight. All right, all right. And on that note, everybody, we are gone. All right, man. I appreciate you. Thank you.